What's up, guys? This is the Gospel According to Mark with a C. He is I, and I am he. Just taking some time to tell you exactly what's on my mind. Thank you for joining me once again, my friends. Now, guys, if there's any of you out there who's wondering why Disney is currently crashing and burning, I offer you this latest example, which just shows you that even Disney in 2023 can mess up the most simplest of assignments, which is to bring the beloved classic Snow White and the Seven Dwarves into live action on the big screen as if anybody really needed this. The cartoon from 1930-something is actually a classic, and it's a timeless classic. You can just show this story to kids, and you can just have it be like that. But no, they have to update everything because, of course, we got to squeeze more money out of every possible thing that we can. But as I stated before, they can't even get that right because now Snow White and the Seven Dwarves and I covered this story over a year ago, has been altered where they will no longer have seven dwarves. Now, this is in large part the fault of Peter Dinklage and probably those like him, but he's the most notable, who spouted off about how it was just terrible and we should have moved past this and it's stereotypical and offensive to little people that they should be cast as dwarves. So he popped off so bad that Disney had to come back and say, you know what? You're right. We're going to change this. We're going to take that away and we're going to update it. We're going to make it different. And now I know a lot of you have seen the still that's been floating around. Of course, it's in the thumbnail where you can see what they have changed this to. Now, Snow White has been replaced with Rachel Ziegler, who is not white. She starred in uh, West Side Story, which is ironic because she took the place of uh, Maria, which was played originally by Natalie Wood in the uh, famous and classic movie because she wanted to be more accurate. So Maria was supposed to be Puerto Rican and of course Natalie Wood is not Puerto Rican so they put in Rachel Ziegler to make everything right. Now this is kind of walking it backwards because she wants to play or she has been cast to play Snow White when she is not, in fact, Snow White. And I want to make a point about that, guys, because remember, Snow White is not just a name. It's a description of this particular character. Her skin was said to be so white that they called her Snow White because she was so white. Now they should call her No White. And I should also reiterate, guys, that <clears throat> for people who think this is solely about race, um, Snow White, all right, a white complexion that you should be called, that is so white that you, you're called Snow White, um, also leaves out white people who are like peach skinned or darker complected white people. So it's not all about race. It's about that particular shade of white, not the whole race. So people who are getting offended by that, you're completely missing the mark. Now, what they did with the dwarves is terrible because they took away the little people altogether and they replaced it with what I can only describe as the village people. So it should be called No White and the Village People. And it takes away from the whole meaning of the story. So why are you even doing this story? But as I stated before, I did cover this last year. And I was covering it from the point of view of Dylan Postal, who is also a little person who took offense to Peter Dinklage taking offense on behalf of all little people. Uh, to the point where they would change this and put a bunch of little people out of work. Now, a year later, Dylan Postal is on uh, Pierce Morgan Uncensored. And I want to play a little clip here of him talking about this because he's making a great point and I want to make a larger point about this. Now I'm going to play the audio, so guys, listen up. And if you can't hear it, once again, I am going to leave this in the pinned comment below. Check out Dylan Postal on Pierce Morgan. Well, let me bring in Dylan because Dylan... Uh a dwarf actor. Dylan, I've got to say, I, I was very curious when I saw what Peter Dinklage came out and said, because I did wonder who appointed him the head of the dwarf actor community. And it turns out nobody did other than him. And the people who it seems to me have really suffered in all this are the six dwarf actors who would have expected to have roles in this remake in a massive Hollywood blockbuster who are now not going to have that experience All the money all the fame that may have come with that. What is your response to that? Ads. Don't you just love YouTube? Hold on. <laughs> so it's not a progression at all to me. My issue with it is exactly what you said. There are actors, dwarf actors, that 
live that, that dream to be in a major motion picture such as this Disney remake. And now, because Peter Dinklage uh, said what he said last year, now it's taken away, and it's taken away because of quote unquote progression and all that. And that's it's not it's not really it's not right because these are roles made for actors of my stature, roles that aren't ever really given. I can't go out for the Harrison Ford or the George Clooney roles because that's not for me. These dwarf roles are for people of my stature. Right. And now it's taken away. It, it, I don't feel that's right. And not only that, but now think about the additional stunt actors or body doubles or that. Now you're talking multiple actors right. of my stature that don't get these major roles. And why? What's the real? What's the reasoning? Because we're supposed to be progressive and we're supposed to just not view them as that. Well, you know the these irony. Heroes. The all irony. of these dwarves, yeah. all of the, all of the, these dwarves took care of Snow White. Right. They all had characteristics. That's right. Separate characteristics. They weren't these cave dwelling monsters that that, that that people speak of. It's it's they all had seven different characteristics mm-hmm. for seven different actors that from my community. And I don't I don't feel it's right that they got taken, I taken completely away from us. And utterly agree with you. And the irony Okay, what's the irony? Is that they profess these progressives to want to do this to protect you. Right, they protect dwarf actors from being, you know, somehow smeared. But you don't feel that way at all, Peter. Peter Dinklage spoke up about this, and that was my issue. He had in the past no issue cashing checks that were made for dwarf roles like Elf and all of that. Yes, he blew. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're just gonna cut that in the interest of time. But uh, absolutely, and I agree, uh, this is where the rub is. You know, this is where the con job is, is that they do do this in the name of protecting these people. Meanwhile, they're taking away their opportunities. And this is what I'm talking about. This is the crazy part about it. Please, people, we have to beware of these so-called liberals, these do-gooders out here who claim to be fighting the fight for you or for me or for all of us who are just messing it up for everybody. Once again, an example of the wrong ones killing everything. Woke! That's what I'm trying to make happen, guys, because that's exactly what it is. Why? Because people are always like, well, what does woke even mean? Well, it used to mean being aware. That's all it used to mean. But now it's a clear example of the wrong ones killing everything. That's what it is. All right. And that's where we are. And and it's the same thing, the point that I was making with Black Panther when I was saying that a while ago. People are just, they don't understand how they're being taken advantage of, guys. You realize if The Wizard of Oz was made today there would be no munchkins. It would just be a bunch of donuts running around. There'd be no munchkins because people are so-called offended, even though we all love the uh, the munchkins. We love the, the little people, the Lilliputians, you know, all of that, you know, but this is where we are now, guys. We would be robbed of all of that. I mean, you even have the remake of uh, Willy Wonka coming out where they have Hugh Grant playing a Oompa Loompa. Once again, what's up with the little people? This is a perfect opportunity for them, you know, but... We allow these people to rob all of us of the true diversity of this world when we do things like this, when we're checkboxing and we're, we're being offended on behalf of other people. And um, once again, guys, because I, I want to play this clip also of the late, great Chadwick Boseman, because this was the point that I was trying to make with Black Panther, where we allowed these, these stuff suits, these Hollywood executives to come in here and tell us what's good for you people. Whereas we can't have a legacy black superhero because the actor who poured his heart into this role passed away. Now listen to the words of Chadwick Boseman himself. All right. He'll tell you how he feels about this. For everybody who wants to keep having that argument, listen up to Chadwick. You're making movies and you're doing well, people start to say, oh, he's the next Denzel. Oh, he's that. Right. Making your success be based upon the idea that there can only be one of you. And we as actors, we talk about this. We talk about how debilitating that is, how negative it is, how, um, you know, it's, it's also frightening. 
you know what I'm saying, to a certain degree, because you feel like you, it, it, it divides and conquers. It makes us... Pitch you against each other. us against each other, yeah. exactly. So I root for Idris Elba. I root, I root for, for, for David and Michael. and I root for everybody because I know if they do well, the truth is um, it, it presents an opportunity for me. If you're making movies and you're doing well, people start to say, oh, he's the next. All right, there it is. All right, so those are the words of Chadwick Boseman. You hear what he says specifically about it divides and conquers. It divides people. And that's what Hollywood is about more than anything. That is job number one in Hollywood today, to divide us and conquer us. Right now, they're in the process of dividing us, dividing us along sexual lines, along, along gender lines, along racial lines. And once they've divided us as much as they possibly can, we will be ripe for conquering. And that's what it is. Even if it, you think it's a little thing such as a children's story, guys, we have to preserve our traditions. You know, we cannot fall victim to these people who want to tear apart everything that we worked so hard for in the past. These are the people, once again, that I say go across the country, tearing down statues, trying to destroy history. And I always said, why not preserve it in a museum? As Indiana Jones used to say, it belongs in a museum. But people love just tearing apart everything that came before. Even if it's a, it's a little thing like a children's story up to monuments. You know, this is the reason why they have ruins in Rome and Greek and stuff and Greece and stuff like that. People tore down their history and they shouldn't because we have to learn from our history. We have to preserve our traditions, every last piece of it. But we're in this stage now where they want to deconstruct everything so they can build everything back up in their own satanic image. Well, there it is, guys. How do you feel about what I'm talking about here about the whole Snow White and the Seven Dwarves? Now it's Snow White and the village people. And um, I think it's a shame. I think it's a perfect example, it's a, a great snapshot of where we are in our culture today. But you can get in the comment section. Let me know how you feel about this, guys. Thank you once again for listening. You can like, you can share, you can subscribe. Thank you, everyone who's been leaving your super thanks. I really, really do appreciate that. Um, I will catch you on the next one. This is The Gospel According to Mark with a C. Rock on.